Welcome back everybody to part two of my playthrough of the Solitaire Scenario 1 from the base, games, uh, base game of Space Empires from GMT Games. In the last video we did kind of an introduction to the scenario and the system and then we played through the first entire economic phase. So now we're going to start with the second economic phase and I'm hoping to play maybe three or four of these in this video. Keep them to 30 minute bite sized videos so that you can watch them at your leisure. Um, <clears throat> one error that I made last time that I wanna correct now is when I discovered the black hole, if you remember, with my scout ship, I inadvertently forgot to move my third scout ship and went ahead through that exploring process made my roll for the, you know, trying to escape the effects of the black hole. I rolled a nine and it was destroyed. I rewatched that video and I'm like, oh crap, I, I forgot an entire scout. So once again, this is the one I forgot. So if we go back in that exploration phase, I would have moved here. It just kind of makes sense leaving this one to explore this region and I'll start going over here. So let's go ahead and turn that over. Great, we found a, a colonizable planet, which is good, and it's close to my home system, which is also very good. Um, so that's where we would have ended. I, I would not have done anything else. That was the only thing I forgot to do. So thanks for letting me correct that error. So now we're gonna go on to the second eco uh, economic phase. And we're going to do all of our movements, and then we're going to go back, if you remember, to our production sheet. So turn one of economic phase two, I get to move my scout ships. Remember, I only have two scout ships now. Another one was destroyed by that black hole. So I'm going to move here. And remember, you do all your movements prior to, actually, I'm going to go ahead and explore here prior to doing your exploration. So I'm gonna move this colony ship up here. I might either colonize here, or if I find one here, I might move over there. If you remember, I have a two more colony ships. I'm gonna move one there, and I'm gonna move both of those there. Just once again, to kind of get a, um, get a uh, head start on, on doing some of that. I forgot to take that one off as well. So now I've got uh, to move, can talk, think about moving my miners. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this miner here, trying to get this mineral. And I'll move this miner here at that close mineral. He picks it up. I have now moved all of my ships. Let's go to the exploration phase. Oh, great, I found another planet, Sirius. So this, whoops, kind of butterfingers today. So this is now my third colonizable planet that I've found, which is great. Um, I think in this game, one of the very key elements is getting a good start, a good quick start. So this is going to allow me to get a good, get a good quick start. Hopefully I have a couple colonies uh, moving up, so we'll, we'll see what happens. So I explored there. Let's go up. I found a mineral, and you know what a mineral looks like. So that's the end of turn one in the economic phase two. I'm gonna to go to turn two. So now we just move everything one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and move this ship over here and that's a little less efficient, but I'll start making my way back going through some deep space areas. And then I'm gonna move this ship here. Actually, I'm gonna move here. Because once again, this is closer and I might be able to colonize that which is which is key. So here I'm gonna move this colony ship onto planet Sirius and it will crash on there. I'm gonna move this miner here to collect that. And then I'm going to, I'm actually gonna dump, move this miner here and dump that mineral on this colony. You can start doing that once you've produced in that colony. And then I've got decisions about colony ships. I'm gonna move one here, and I will move one here. 
You might ask me, well, Grant, why didn't you move this colony ship into this space? So if you remember at the very beginning, I told you that no other ship or ships can't necessarily move into areas and through areas that are unexplored. Unexplored means that this chit isn't turned over. The scout's already there. I'm not going to go ahead and commit him there. It may, it may end up in my benefit to kind of move him up here. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's all my movements. In the second turn, I'm going to go ahead and flip. Oh, great. Found another planet, Castor, which is my fourth planet. Uh, and then over here, let's see an asteroid belt, which does no damage. It's just going to kind of slow my movements down. So that is now the end of the second economic phase. I'm going to move to the third economic phase. So I'm going to go into deep space, which is slightly dangerous with that scout. I'm going to move this mining ship back here to dump off eventually at my home planet. This colony ship is going to move into Eclis and crash itself onto the planet, starting the process of, of mining. This miner is going to move here to pick up that, and it dropped that at that area. And then I will just leave that colony ship there. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will move it over to the left. One, two, three. Now nah, I'll go ahead and buy next round and place some ships there so I can do that. So those are the ends of my movements in round or turn three of the second economic phase. So now we're going to go back. Now that everything's been been accomplished there. Remember, we're going to go back to our production sheet. We are in economic phase two. You can see that up, up there. I had no carryover from the last time I'd spent all my CPs or construction points. I put zero there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my colonies and see what I'm going to generate. My home planet or home world generates 20 and then this colony generates one. So I'm going to generate 21 at this point. So I will enter 21 there. I collected one mineral and delivered that. So that's going to give me five CP. So I'll write that. No pipeline, I'm not using those advanced rules. So I have a total of 26 CPs, you can see there, at the total of the CP area. Now I'm gonna to go to maintenance cost. And remember, maintenance costs only are derived from ships that have a hull size, with the exception of shipyards. You do not pay maintenance for your shipyards. So at this point, I only have two ships that will require maintenance. Oh, you know what? Man, I'm just, I'm jumping ahead. I need to explore and I found a barren planet. I, I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to explore. I found Deneb, a barren planet. You might ask, what's a barren planet? Well, a barren planet can be colonized, but not unless you have purchased the upgrade uh, terraforming. Now that I've discovered two of those, and now that they're generally close, you know, I might go ahead and, and uh, invest in that technology because that would be two new planets I could colonize. We'll see where that goes or where that leads me. So I apologize for that. So anyway, back to the maintenance. I only have two ships that have a hull size of one or greater. So that's going to be two maintenance. I do not use turn order bid in this part of the game. So I'm going to subtract my total CPs for the round, 26, minus my two maintenance cost. So let's see if my math is good. That's going to give me 24 CPs to use in this round. If you remember last time, I invested in ship size two so that I could start considering constructing uh, destroyers. I also invested in a colony ship, an additional miner. I think looking at my situation now, I think what I need to do is invest in a couple of colony ships. I just crashed two I have a third one that's out there in this hex, hex J7. And if you remember, I discovered Castor, which can be colonized 
and I have these two barren planets, Hoth and Deneb, that I can potentially colonize if I buy terraforming technology. It's expensive, man. I think I'm going to wait one. Ah, I, don't, I don't feel like I should wait. The problem is, is I'm not going to necessarily be able to buy another colony ship. You know what? I'm going to do it. So I'm investing in terraforming, which costs, unfortunately, it costs 20 CP. I'm going to write that. And then I have 4 CP remaining. There's not really anything I can do with 4 CP. So I'm simply going to carry that over. So let me show you the way my production sheet looks. Remember, you're looking at the second column. So I invested in terraforming, cost 20. I didn't buy anything else, and that may end up being a mistake, but I think that terraforming technology is going to help me. Should I look at getting a ship? Nope, shipyards are six, so I don't quite have enough. So I'm going to have four remaining CPs, and I'm gonna get several of my colonies going here and still have access to a couple of a couple of uh, minerals so I can I can get some extra CP. So I think that's what we're going to do, guys. So that is now the end of my second economic phase, turn an economic phase. So we're now going to go to the third economic phase. Once uh, now actually I'm sorry, we skipped one phase. We're going to go to the grow colonies phase. So at this point this colony, if you remember, last turn was a one. I'm going to flip it over to its three. It will now produce three CPs every round. So it's, it's rapidly growing. This ship that, that crashed, I'm going to put a one colony on top of it, as well as the colony ship over here that crashed and when I say crash on Sirius, it crashed. Really cool thematic part of the game. The colony ship, in the process of colonizing a planet, the colonists break down the entire ship to use it in building up the colony. So it's designed in that way that the colony ship, which transports them out to the, to the planets, is used as the basis for the infrastructure development and, and uh, construction. So kind of a cool thematic element. So you can see I now have three producing colonies. I have a couple of miners that are getting ready to dump uh, their minerals, and that's a good thing. I've now invested in terraforming technology so I can actually uh, colonize Deneb and Hoth, and you can see I have a, a colony ship waiting here that I'm gonna move over there and probably start a, a, a fourth colony. And then we'll, we'll kind of go from there and start developing th some things so that I can continue to grow. So once again, we're going to move to the third economic phase. If you remember correctly, I carried over four construction points. So I'm going to write that at the top of that worksheet so that I don't forget that. All right, so back to exploration. Or I'm sorry, movement then exploration. So I'm going to move that scout into there. I think I'm going to move this scout here. Once again, it's close to some other colonies, and, and if I find something, I can get it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to go out here and explore at the very edges of space and then not be able to return. I'm going to move this way just a little bit. Return quickly to dump those and, and, and uh, take advantage of them. So you got to kind of plan. I like that element of the game. You, re you remember, I'm going to go ahead and dump that colony ship here on Hoth, which was previously a barren planet. But now that I've invested in terraforming technology, I can, I can colonize it, which is a good thing. I'm also going to move this miner back to Chulak, and he's, eventually, he's going to drop that five. And then this is going to which that one has not produced yet, so he's going to have to... No, it's not produce. I can, I can dump it there. It doesn't have to produce. I think that's with shipyards. So I'm going to go here and dump that, and then he'll be available to go gather some other minerals. So that's a good thing. So I think that's all my movements. 
I think that's everything that can move. Now we go to exploration. Found another mineral, which once again is an economic boon because you get to collect those and you get some extra CPs. So that concludes all my movement. I'm going to round, move the marker to round two or turn two of this third economic phase, starting with exploration. So I'm going to explore here. And my scout over here, I'm, I think I'm going to explore. It's kind of moving this way. I'm going to go ahead and explore here. Then my miners, I uh, see I can't move in there. He's going to go here to try to get to this mineral. And this miner is going to go out here to try to get to that mineral. Nothing else can move. There's nothing else to move. So I will go ahead and explore. Great, found another planet, that's awesome. And here I found a nether mineral, which is a good thing. So that's all my movements and my explorations for the second turn. I will now move into my third turn. On my third turn, I'm gonna take a chance. Nah, I'm gonna explore here. The, the problem and the reason I'm resisting going into this deep space is there are a lot a lot of bad chits out in deep space. There's a lot of danger chits that when you go into them, you don't get a roll like the black hole. You just simply die. So I, I really want to keep that explorer or scout around a couple more rounds so I can explore a little bit before I lose him. But eventually I've got to do that. I've got to go out there and explore because I don't want my capital ships dying from going into danger. So that's why I'm hesitating to go to these white ones, which represent deep space. I'm going to go ahead and stay safe and go to my home planet there. So with that, or home system. So with that decision made, I'm going to move up to this one because he can get that one next turn. That's a little more efficient. And this game is a little bit about efficiency. You're trying to figure out the best routes to go and get places. So this miner is going to go ahead and collect this mineral and miner two. He's going to collect this mineral. Actually, he's going to collect this one. Once again, that's a subtle element of efficiency. The reason I chose that is because if I move here, I'm going to be less efficient with my movements, trying to get back to my colony to dump that mineral eventually. I'm not going to be able to get to it this economic phase, so I'll take the shorter, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll eliminate the longer route pick this one up, carry it back, and I still won't be able to get both of them, but it's better than it what it uh, potentially could have been. Once again, there are some uh, subtleties of efficiency, and that's part of that. So, all my movements are done. I'm now going to explore another mineral, which is good. Ooh, and another planet. So you can see I need to get a couple. I have three colonizable, actually four colonizable planets. I need to get colony ships. I think next time I'm going to focus on shipyards and colony ships so I can start getting getting guys out there. So guys, that is the end of the third turn in the third economic phase. So we're going to go back to the production sheet. So bear with me. We're going to look at our colony CP production. Homeworld gives you 20 I have a colony here that's going to give me 23, colony here that gives me one, that's 24, another one colony that's going to give me 25 total. So I write 25, how many mineral CPs did I bring back? 5, 10. So two chits, I'm going to write in the mineral CPs 10, and that's a good thing. So now, let's go back to that sheet just so you see it. Remember, I carried over four, I generated 25, and I found 10 CPs worth of minerals. So I'm going to add that together, 39. So I have a total of 39 for my economic output on the third economic phase. That's pretty good. Remember, my first phase was only 25, my second phase was 26. So now I'm going to do my maintenance costs again. I still only have two ships that have a hull size greater than one or one or greater. So I'm going to write two there. I subtract those. So I have 37 points 
to spend. This is going to be a, a better round for me, although I'm going to invest quite heavily in colony ships. So let me go ahead and think through this just for a second. You may be shouting at me, do this, do this, kind of like they do on The Price is Right. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, once again, I have one, two, three, four planets that can be colonized, but... So I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy two shipyards. So shipyards times two, shipyards cost six, and they are going to give me the ability to build one hull point or one ship. So that's going to cost me 12. So I'll go ahead and dig out two shipyards. And I'm actually going to place them in different systems. So I will go ahead and get two, uh, two chits. I'm going to lay those right here. I'm not going to place those at my home planet, but I'm buying them for right now. So that cost me 12. And then I think I want to buy four. Can I produce four though? Yes, I can produce four. I can produce four colony ships. So I'm going to spend 32. I can't, I can't do four. Colony ships are eight apiece, so I think I'm going to get three, three colony ships. So that's going to be 24. So I spent a total of 36. I did not invest in any technologies. Next round, I'm going to start investing, which is important. So I'm going to have one CP remaining, and I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so now I'm going to place what I bought. I'm going to place a shipyard out this way. And you might ask me, why am I doing that? Well, remember, there's an identified specific areas here on the left side of the map. It's this area and this area that the doomsday machine potentially could come into. Having a shipyard out closer is a good thing because as I'm fighting him off, I can be building ships that will reinforce or send more, more units. So I'm going to put that there. I also can place colony ships, miners if I so choose, that can then move out and, and explore this area of space. So that's my decision there. I'm going to place that shipyard there. I'm also going to place one colony ship there. My second shipyard, I'm kind of going to do a, a similar kind of a similar concept. I'm going to place it here. And then I'm going to place one colony ship at my home. So there you go. That's the placement of what I bought. We're now going to move into uh, the first action phase or turn of the fourth economic phase. And we are getting closer, guys, to when the... Uh, Doomsday machines are going to show up. So this is the time now that we want to kind of make some hay, get some ships going, and, and get our economy really established. So now we're going to go to the grow colonies phase. Pretty simple. Going to turn that one over to a three. This one over to a three. This one over to a five. So there's the five marker. And then the colony ship that crashed last time, I'm going to put a one on it. So you can see that turn I increased significantly. I increased two points, four points, five points, seven new construction points. That's solid. So I need to get a couple more colonies started so that I can continue uh, developing. So let's see what happens. So once again, my movements, I'm gonna move my, I'm gonna move this scout ship here. I'm gonna move this scout here. Oops, I. you can see I just flipped that over on accident. That's not a good thing. I'm going to take this mineral back and I'm gonna dump it here. I'm gonna move one space closer to dump that mineral back, probably here. This colony ship, I'm going to crash into Caster. This colony ship, I'm going to move out one, aiming to go to Kronos. And this colony ship, 
I'm going to go towards Pollux. So I'm going to move one space here. So yeah, you can see what I'm starting to do. I'm starting to build a kind of a series of bases so that I can start constructing things out in the further reaches of my home system. And then I'm trying to attack uh, these planets, colonize them, develop them, and, and generate some economic activity. So that's all my movements. Let's go ahead and, oh, we have a nebula. A nebula does not have any function immediately, but it does have a very interesting function. When you move into a nebula, all defensive technology levels, not your defense strengths shown on the counters, but the defensive technologies that you've upgraded are nullified. They're considered zero. So that's one of those things that kind of evens that out and, and you've got to uh, consider that. So if you have not invested into advanced defensive technologies, this is a great place to store units, aggressive space, uh, your capital ships, because you want someone to attack you there because they lose their defenses. So keep that in mind. Here we're going to flip this one over and surprise, surprise that I had already uh, uncovered that, but we have Dakara. So yeah, you can see we still have one, two, three, four planets that I need to get out to and colonize. So we'll see how this is going to go. So now we go to turn two of economic phase four. What are we going to do? This miner is going to capture that mineral. He's going to begin towing it back. This miner is going to dump that mineral at the home base. That's his, his movement. This colony ship is going to crash on Pollux. So it'll start developing a colony next turn or next economic phase. And then we've got, ah, shoot, got to figure out where we're going to explore. So I'm going to explore here and now I'm going to start taking a couple of risks. So I'm going to explore. I'm going to start exploring some of those deep space. And I'm telling you, there's not a lot of great options in deep space. A lot of them are danger, but you've got to explore them. So I think that's all my movements have moved. Whoop, I got a colony ship here that should have moved here. He's going for Kronos. He'll in there next turn, which is good. And I think that's all my movements. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this over. Oop, danger. Remember I talked about danger? Danger literally means any ship in that sector, once that is revealed, is eliminated. Which really sucks, frankly. Because now I'm not going to be able to explore here unless I, you know, this side of the map, unless I buy another scout. But the good news is that's going to reduce my maintenance cost for the next turn. You know, there's some silver lining in that dark cloud. Now we're going to go over here and uncover, oh, we got another planet, which is good. So yeah, we, we've still got, man, we got a lot of planets. We've been fortunate. We've got one, two, three, four, four planets that still need to be colonized. So I need to build a couple more colony ships next turn, but I need to start investing in defensive and attack technologies and developing my fleet. I probably need to go up in ship size next time. I probably need to do a defensive or an attack bonus increase. I, I really need to start developing that because those doomsday machines are on their way. So that's the end of the second phase. Nope, gotta move this miner back. So he's gonna move back and dump that there. And I think everyone else has moved, yes. So now we'll go to turn three and economic phase four. I'm gonna crash this colony ship onto Kronos. This miner is going to move onto that mineral. This miner is gonna move there. This scout is going to go here in this sector next to the black hole. And I think that is all my movements. Yes. I wish I could have afforded one more colony ship last time, but it is what it is. So that's all my movements. I'm now going to turn over. And once again, I only explored one sector because I only have, so there's a nebula. That's okay. I've got enough planets that I can colonize and, and start getting getting towards. So that's all my movements, all my explorations were done. We're now going to go to the 
economic phase of turn four. And once again, calculate using the production sheet, we're going to calculate what our economy is generating. So bear with me. 20 for our home planet. This colony is five, that's 25. Uh, 26, 29, 32. So yeah, that's, that's pretty good. 32. So our, our colonies generated seven more construction points that turn, and I think it was four over the previous turn. So we're growing. We're starting to grow, and that's a good thing. Mineral CPs, I have quite a few. I have 10, well, from two there, and then I dropped one off. So that's 15 CPs that I'm going to get. I'm going to reestablish my colony after my hand destroyed it. So 15 in the minerals, I'm going to add those together. With the one I carried over, I have 48. My maintenance cost is now only one. No turn order bid. So I have 47 CP to spend this turn. So once again, we are now three rounds away from the first doomsday machine showing up. I've got to start focusing more on my, or my uh, army, my, my military power. So I'm going to invest in ship size three because ship size three, and I'm gonna show you this really quickly. This is kind of your aid. I'm gonna to have to move the camera up. Your player reference sheet. This is specifically the ship size, ship chart. You'll notice here on the destroyer, that is kind of your first combat ship other than a scout. You'll notice here that it says, must have ship size technology two or more to build. I have that, but I can tell you cruisers are much, much, much better than destroyers. Cruiser have, cruisers have a defensive value, whereas destroyers do not. They have an additional hull size, which means they can take an additional hit. In fact, I'm gonna show you a counter for each of those, just so you can see the comparison. So bear with me. I'm... So you can see on the right is the destroyer DD. It has a four attack power and a zero defense, and it can take one hit because it has one hull size. A cruiser here on the left has a four attack power, the same, but it has a defensive value, and you can see its ship size or hull size is two. So a better investment for only three CP more is your cruisers. So I'm going to avoid, another thing is you also notice cruisers will fire on a priority C, destroyers fire on a D. I believe the first doomsday machine is a D, so I'm actually going to get shots at that doomsday machine before it's going to be able to attack me, and that's a good thing. So just, I'll, I'll, I showed you that so you can understand. So I'm probably going to invest this round let me turn that camera back down. Probably going to invest this round in a couple of technologies, a couple more shipyards, a couple more colony ships, and maybe my first cruiser. But you got to remember, when you buy ships, they gain the technology that you have at that level or at that time. So if I'm going to continue to invest in that technology, I, I need to be a little cautious because I'm gonna end up you know, kind of having to then upgrade them, which is not really difficult, it's just a little bit of a hassle. So I, I need to be cautious and really, really plan this out. So I'm gonna invest in ship size three. All right, ship size three on my sheet and my technology spending. We'll circle that at the bottom, that cost me 15, so not a lot. Then, I'm actually going to invest, yes, it's so expensive. I'm going to invest in attack one, which costs 20. So I spent 35 of my 47 on technology investments because I'm going to buy warships next round. So now I still have 12. I'm gonna buy a colony ship cost me eight. 
and then I'm going to carry four over. Maybe I did this not uh, suboptimally, but I, I think I've done okay. I think that's going to work out okay. So once again, I spent 15 on ship size three so that I can build my cruisers. I invested in attack one for 20 so that my, my uh, attack values are going to be increased one time. And remember, a cruiser and a destroyer has a base attack value of four, which means I have to roll fours or less in order to hit. So with an attack one, I can roll hit on fives or less. So I increase my odds by 10%, basically. And then I bought a colony ship. And I'm going to put that colony ship, I'm actually going to put it out here so I can, boy, I feel like maybe I should, you know what? I hate to do this, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do the ship size three yet. I will do the tech. And for that, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy a total of three colony ships. 24. So I actually have three left over. So I apologize for that. You know, I, I, I should have thought that through a little bit more. I need to get my economy going. I really do. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm carrying over three to the, to the economic phase five. And now we're going to grow colonies. And you, you're going to see that it's going to start exponentially growing. So this colony is going to get a one. This colony is going to become fully developed. So this colony ship will be a five, which is a good thing. This colony ship will become a one. It crashed on that planet. This one will become a five. So that colony ship on Eclis is now a five. Uh, this colony ship here will become a one. This one will become a three. This one was already a five, it's maxed out. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and uh, we grew colonies, which is a good thing. And we added, we added quite a bit of CPs to our production. That was a good thing. So once again, going back, I'm gonna buy, I'm buying three colony ships. Did I already put one of them out? Guys, I can't remember. Um, no, I already put one of them out. I put one here. So I'm going to go ahead and get two other colony ships, which I need to place here. And here. Okay. So I'm going to be able to move that way and, and at least pick up two new colonies this time. So now we're going into... Economic phase five, turn one. So we're going to do our movements. I'm down to only one scout. I'll move there. Uh, boy, this mineral ship has kind of run out of stuff to gather. Or the miner. I'm going to move there just in case some of these turn out to be minerals. Um, where's my other miner? So he's going to drop this one on this colony. That's his action. This colony ship's going to move here, trying to get to Bajor. This colony ship is going to go ahead and crash into the barren planet Deneb. But remember, I did colonasia or terraforming technology. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change that miner's movement. He will have moved to this area because there's this mineral here. Colony ship, um, he's moved there. I'm going to go ahead and move him up. That colony ship will move towards Dakara. That guy's target is Bajor. So yeah, you can see I have a nice little plan going on to pick up three new colonies at the end of this round, which is a great thing. All right, now we're going to explore. We found another mineral. That's good. All movements, all exploration. We're going to go to turn two. You can see this game really can go very quickly uh, once you get the basics down. I'm going to move my miner out here, securing that mineral deposit to start 
Uh, towing that back, I'm gonna move my colony ship here, targeting Dakara. I'm gonna move this colony ship here, targeting Bajor. And then this guy's going to explore here. Which actually, this is my very last home system exploration chit. So, that's a good thing. Now I'm trying to remember, did I move my miner? I don't, dang it. Guys, don't get old, I'm telling you. I don't think I moved my miner. I'm gonna go ahead and move him there. So that's, that's all my movements. So I'm gonna do my one exploration here in this second round. I found another mineral deposit. That's a good thing. This ship is going to crash here. And that's it. No more movements. So I'm gonna to go to turn three in economic phase five. This miner is going to dump that there. I have no colony ships or anything over in that way to move. I have a colony ship here that I'm going to move. This guy is going to pick up that mineral. And this scout ship is going to move in here and explore. Good. So I have nothing else to move. I'm gonna go ahead and, up. Oh, there we go, guys. Danger. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, and I know you can barely. So once again, that scout ship gets destroyed. I'm gonna have to move this back a little bit so you guys can, I'm starting to spread out and it's gonna get a little harder to get everything in. I'll figure it out here. We're almost done with this video. So yeah, once again, scout ship's destroyed. There's a lot of those danger tokens. So I'm gonna reduce involuntarily my maintenance by one. Once again, not a terrible thing. Um, but that is the end of all, that's all my movements and explorations there in the third turn of economic phase five. So we're gonna go back to counting colony points. We're gonna stop after I do this and I'll talk a little bit about some things that I may consider doing as I move on and then we'll, I'll shoot another video this weekend and hopefully try to get to the first fight, um, which I know you're all waiting for. So counting uh, CPs from my colonies, 20, 25, 28, 29, 34, 35, 40, 41. So that's great. 41, which is nine CP higher than last turn's 32. And you can see we're gonna even have greater than that, which is a great thing. Mineral CPs, how many did I, I only found 10. But that's good, 10 is good. Basically that, look at that 10 as almost paying for a majority of an upgrade. That's the way I kind of like to look at it. So I'm gonna add those all together. That's 54 total production. I have zero maintenance now. So I'm going to have 54 to spend. And this, uh, this sheet's getting a little messy. So you can see here we're in, we're in economic phase five. Uh, we have a subtotal of 54, which I wrote in. So now we're gonna decide what we're going to do so I'm gonna go back. I am going to do the ship size three. You remember last time I decided not to do that so I could buy some more colony ships. I'm also going to buy defend one. I think that's important. Defend one, defense one, sorry, cost 20. So I've spent 35 of my 54 on technology, but that's a good thing. You know, once again, it's gonna make it harder for that doomsday machine and my enemies to hit me. Um, you know, I may need to start investing in. So yeah, now I gotta decide. I still have, how many planets do I have? I have no planets that are uncovered. So I'm probably not, I'm probably almost done I think I'm pretty much done with building colonies, to be honest, because I'm out of scout ships. I don't know. 
We'll have to decide if I'm going to end up buying a scout ship. But as far as ship spending, I'm going to go ahead and buy. I'm going to increase my shipyards. I'm going to put one additional shipyard at both, both this colony and this colony. So that's going to cost me a total of 12. So shipyard times two is 12. So that's 47. I still have 17 to spend. Uh, sorry guys, I'm, I'm just thinking. I have 17 to spend. So I could buy a cruiser and carry five over. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to buy my first cruiser, which costs 12. That's going to allow me to carry five over. So I'll show you my production sheet. Once again, 54 had no maintenance. I'm going to start having maintenance because I bought a cruiser. Uh, 54, I bought ship size 3 for 15. Defense 1 for 20. I, up, I added one shipyard to each of my colony shipyard areas. I can then place that cruiser out there because it has a hull size of 2. And then I bought one cruiser. And that cruiser is going to come in and have an attack plus one and a defense plus one, which is key. So there you go. I will get my, sorry, I hit the, so I need two. <clears throat> and basically I'm going to put these number chits under my shipyards, right? I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, because I have one here. So now I have two. So I have two shipyards, and then the same thing here. I'll just use the chit, and then I'll put on it, the number underneath it, and I will. you'll see that I have two there. One important thing, a couple of important things about shipyards that I think are very cool. You can only ever build one shipyard in any colony. You can't build four shipyards. That's why you've got to kind of start early and build up those numbers because once again in order to put a couple of cruisers in a colony out here cruisers have two hull size a piece so I'm going to have to have four shipyards to build two cruisers if I want to build anything else I have to have more shipyards the other cool thing about shipyards let me show you this token so shipyards actually have an attack value you can see their attack priority is a C their attack value is a three. That means you're going to roll a die for each shipyard you have. You're going to hit on threes or less. They also gain the exact same technologies that you have for your ship, and they automatically gain them. You don't have to upgrade them or improve them. So this one actually, with the investments I've made, it's going to have a four attack and a one defense. Unfortunately, its hull shot size is only one, and it will take one hit and be destroyed. But as a fire priority C, if a doomsday machine or an enemy ship comes in there, it's going to get, it's going to get attacked. So those are kind of good. Um, so yeah, those are my shipyards. I now want to get my cruiser. Sorry, I'm going to go with my cruiser group one. And I am going to go ahead and put one number under it. And I'm actually going to put that cruiser here. Now, the really cool thing about the multiplayer game when you're not playing a solitaire scenario like I am, you'll notice these numbers go under these chits. You're also going to have these chits turned face down, so your opponent will not know what you have in any given hex at any given time. There are times where you can tell based on the actions, um, but it's cool because I could have six cruisers under there. I'm, I'm simply going to find... Yeah, well, I can't see. There we go. So if I have six cruisers, I'm just going to add, I'm going to use that, that counter over there, and then I'm going to put this number six underneath it. So my opponent will not know that I have six cruisers there. He could guesstimate that, but he's not going to know that for sure. So there we go. I've spent all my money. I'm going to carry over actually five into round six. I'm now going to do the grow colonies step, and this is the last uh, action will take in this video. 
So that goes to a three, that's a five already. He's a three. So you can see I'm really gonna rack up the CPs this round just in time because I'm gonna start needing to build uh, more, more ships. Um, this one, this one's gonna go to a five. So I'll throw that over there and I will turn that over. This one's already a five. This one's going to go to a three. And then these, these two here are gonna go to ones. So yeah, it's nice to invest in colonies. And if you get lucky and draw multiple colonies close up, you're going to be able to really ratchet up your economy more quickly. Uh, I've had a little bit of a slower time doing that, but you can see, let's go ahead and count it up. 23, 24, 29, 34, 39, 42, 47, 48, 49, 52. So I'm actually generating 52, which is 11 more than that last round. So you can see it's starting to snowball. I still have one, two, three, four, five, six colonies that will continue to max. And I don't have any other options for developing colonies. Um, yeah, you can see I'm gonna end up maxing out somewhere in the mid 50s, which is a great thing, or actually 60, sorry. So anyway, that is the end of five full economic phases that I have done and played uh, for you. So we're gonna go ahead and take a break. This video is almost an hour. A Couple of high points that I wanna point out to you. Once again, this game is kind of about, particularly as you're playing the solo scenario when you know at the end of round seven the first doomsday machine is going to appear it's kind of a race to be efficient about collecting resources building colonies developing technologies and then building up a force that can offer resistance and ultimately destroy the doomsday machines that are coming towards you i'm telling you these doomsday machines are ridiculous they'll have four or five attacks they'll be attacking on a six or seven I think the final level that you're going to play on the easy setting, it attacks at a nine. So you can see they're going to hit all the time. If you have not built up a defense uh, on your ships where you're taking two or three away from his rolls, and if you also are not improving your rolling power, you're going to be in trouble. That's why, once again, I'm going to show you that uh, production sheet. You can see I've invested a ton of money in ship size. I'm up now to ship size three. I've attacked, or I'm sorry, I've done attack one and defend one. Next round, I'm most likely going to do defend two. Um, followed the next round by attack two. And then I will start pumping out a couple of cruisers and maybe even go up ship size four so that I can get out my first battle cruiser. Battle cruisers become significantly better. They have a five attack value of one defense, so they start to increase. But you can see I've invested considerably in economic side. How many colony ships total did I, did I buy? I started with three. I have bought one, two, three, four, seven. So I bought seven colony ships. There are eight planets that are colonizable without terraforming in your 25 chits. Um, then I did the barren planet. What else did I wanted to show you here? Uh, once again, you can see I've, I've purchased uh, four shipyards, trying to once again expand my power out into the system so that I can develop and build. I now have shipyards here and here. Once again, set up in an area so that if the, if the doomsday machines appear here, I can get to them fairly quickly. If the doomsday machines, let's see, I think it's right here. Turn that right here and here. Let me move that back a little bit. Right here and here. And these are random. Um, and then the final locations, I want to say, are over here. There are five locations. What happens is I'm going to roll a die. Here I rolled an eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if it was time for the doomsday machine, it would appear in this hex. And it's going to start going for my nearest colony that also gets it nearest or nearer to my home system. So 
So if it appears here, you can see it's going to go for this colony, then this colony, then this colony. So I've really got to start thinking about building these up. And it's very nice that they're close. I'll put some shipyards up. I might put a base up. Also, I'll develop a couple of cruisers and maybe a battle cruiser over the next two rounds. But I'm not going to be able to stop it easily. I'm not going to be able to stop it quickly. It's going to be a, a serious battle. But that's what's fun about this scenario, this so solitaire scenario for Space Empire. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I will put up a third playthrough video. Most likely I will do Economic Phase 6 and 7 with a battle phase next time. I'll try to keep it a little bit shorter. And then I'll maybe do a third video, a fourth video for Economic Phase 8 and 9. And then the second Doomsday, Doomsday Machine will appear and then I'll do up. So I might do five or six videos trying to keep these to 30 to 40 minutes. This one got a little bit longer but I tried to talk to you a little bit about uh, some strategy. So thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Grant with The Player's Aid. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Give us your comments and thoughts. I may have got a rule wrong here or there. Um, yeah, it's hard playing solo games. Sometimes you just kind of forget things, but let me know your thoughts and comments, and then hopefully you'll check out uh, our next video that's upcoming. Thanks a lot, and we'll, we'll see you next time.